workplace homophobia. Yes, I have experienced it. It was awful, it is safe to say. How did I deal with it? Hmm, right, let me give you some background. It was back in 2006 in my third job where I experienced, it was a pretty intense period actually of bullying from my line manager. Imagine this, right, she's in her late 50s I would say, heavy smoker, she liked to drink on an evening, it's safe to say. Uh, she always had coffee on tap, she had a hoarse, deep voice, a petite woman, wore power suits, and she was the kind of woman that thrives on controlling every single thing around her. You know the type, right? <laughs> I think we all do. On my birthday, my mum came into the office and she brought a cake in for me. She gave me a kiss in front of everyone, you know. <laughs> And she said that she'd see me and my girlfriend later on for a meal. Super sweet, right? And in that moment, I was so happy. And then later on, I was sat in my office out the back and I started going over what she'd said to me. My girlfriend. Oh, I couldn't believe it. I hadn't disclosed my sexuality to anyone. And it's safe to say that I kept my private life very, very private at work. And instantly I was worried. I was like, oh my God, has anybody heard? Did anybody hear that? Trust the office to be full of people on that day. Honestly, it's safe to say everyone heard. That's when the bullying started. Daily harassment, intimidation, online abuse, teasing, threats of outing me to my colleagues, all from my manager. Sometimes subtle, sometimes implied, but mostly direct comments about my appearance, the lifestyle that I chose, and derogatory references about having a girlfriend. The bullying, it was so significant that it impacted on my physical health, not to mention my mental health. You can imagine. The stress that I felt on a daily basis, it resulted in me having IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. If you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I've talked about this before. And I, I became unable to teach classes in the mornings. I could only teach afternoon and evening classes because of my symptoms. They were so severe in the mornings, which was, surprisingly, the time when my manager was in full swing. I mean, it's kind of crazy, right, when you think about it. Whoever heard of a teacher that can't teach in the morning? Did I report it? Well, initially, no. No, I didn't. I was too afraid to out myself, basically, to the leadership team. You see, I'd have had to have explained the context of the bullying and show them the emails. And as soon as I did that, they would know that I was gay. And I didn't want anyone else at work to know that about me. It didn't feel safe to bring all of who I am to work. But eventually, yes, it reached a point where I couldn't take it any longer. I felt like I had to report it and her behaviour. What happened? Yes, yeah, so the woman involved, she was promoted, and HR told me not to progress the case any further because it had highlighted my sexuality to my colleagues and peers. I couldn't believe it, you know. Even though I'd documented a year of incidents, emails, communications, and I had witnesses, I was devastated. You know, after all that time and effort of logging every single incident and interaction with her, I can honestly say that I felt let down by the college and the people that claim to look after their people. You'd think that that is where the story would end, right? You know, you experience homophobia in the workplace, you report it, it didn't go as well as you expected it would. And yes, for most people, the story would end there. But for me, it didn't. I realised that I needed to process it. It was, it was eating me up inside. So this is what I did to deal with it. There's three things, okay? So the first thing that I did is I journaled about it. I took some time out and I wrote down what I experienced. I wrote about how it made me feel, how I responded, both in the moment and afterwards. And I'm talking physically, mentally and emotionally. I got it all out onto paper. And by doing this, I was able to process the experience and most importantly, strip away the emotion and the story that I'd attached to it. The second thing that I did, once I could no longer feel that emotional charge when I thought about it, 
I looked at it from another perspective. So I started asking myself different questions like, what could have been going on for her? And what might be happening in her life to make her do what she did? And I get it, right? I know that I will never know if this is true or real. Any of those scenarios that I played out in my head. But it did get me thinking about it. And most importantly, it took me out of the equation. I realised that this experience, it wasn't about me. It was about what was going on inside of her at that moment in time. I know, profound. (laughs) The third thing that I did was... I knew I had to release the emotion and the story that I'd attached to it. So I started by writing a letter to her saying everything that I wanted to say to her. And then I burnt it. That was pretty cool. That that worked. It got the energy moving inside of me. But then after that, I found someone to talk to about it. Someone objective. And I decided to speak with my mentor. But you could speak to anyone like a coach, a counsellor, a colleague or like an LGBT professional that specialises in LGBT issues. They helped me to raise my awareness on what happened, to release all of the emotion that I had subconsciously attached to it, and they explored how I could regain my confidence, my self-esteem, and my mojo. (laughs) And it's funny, right? I didn't realise back then that only a few years later, I would be that LGBT professional that people wanted to speak to about their LGBT-related issues and challenges. Who would have known it? Homophobia? biphobia and transphobia. Listen, it's more common than you might think. Have you ever experienced any form of homophobia, biphobia or transphobia? I'd love to hear from you. Tell me, what were your experiences and what steps did you take as a result of it? I'd love to know. And don't forget, if you've got any questions about coming out or living your life as a lesbian or an LGBT person, please send them in to me. I'm continuing this coming out series as part of the My Queer Life journey for the next few months and I'd love to answer any questions that you might have. Please send them in to me. And lastly, if you want to keep up to date with my latest videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Please share this with your family and friends and don't forget to leave me a message below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.